Okay, game number one on this countdown. And again, the way we kind of decided uh, the final couple games, we looked at the, you know, who the team was, and we looked at the outcome, the result of the game, and just overall, I think, performance based on how we played, uh, the quality of the opponent, the score of the game, so on and so forth. So Wittenberg came into this game 2010 as a 10-0 team. Uh, they were 10-0. Uh, they were ranked, uh, you know, up there high, just like we were. We were 9-1, and one, and we were both right around, I think, the top 10, top number 9, number 8, somewhere in there. And, and uh, there was – because we're both in the same region, first round of the playoffs, they came to ONU, and they were – they had a lot to say about that. A lot of trash was talked in the local newspaper uh, as well as online. So I think that adds a little bit of the setup to the game. And, you know, former OAC member back in the day, so I think – to our alumni, this was a very meaningful game as well, uh, given a lot of those factors. So a home playoff game for about uh, 10 years, something we want to obviously get back to and experience that because that was amazing to have a home playoff game. So we'll get the film rolling right here and uh, find this. we got to get to Okay, so we're going to get, uh, you know, a, a game. Obviously, there's a lot of turnovers. We ended up having seven interceptions on the day, Glenn. And this was after we had a, a – I think the safety was not on here. We had a safety to kind of start, uh, you know, early on in the game. So it's 2 nothing at this time – at this point, I believe. Yeah, you know, defensively, again, preparing for these guys, we didn't have a ton of video throughout the course of the season. So we only had a game or two, I think, maybe towards the end of the season. Some of the opponents they were playing maybe weren't considered as competitive to their standard. And on top of that, you know, they had a, a pretty good quarterback receiver combination, you know, that I think were number one in the country at the time in like some sort of offensive efficiency or yards per catch. So, you know, just a, another situation of, you know, defensively, you know, preparing and, and staying the course and making sure that you're doing things the right way. All right, sorry, I'm struggling a little bit to find that play. Bear with me. I think I was wrong. It's actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to set this up a little better. I'm struggling with my laptop here. So we get a, you know, they stop us right here on third down. We decided to go with the shotgun punt. And just to kind of, you know, the example of how critical field position is, you know, Kyle gets a, it gets a great punt right here, which really sets the tone for the whole first quarter. Yeah, this is something that we started doing, I think, early in the, in the season, and, and this is why you do it. I mean, just this execution down here to pin them literally inside the one-yard line, um, and then you get a big guy like Cody Kelly out there that, uh, if I recall, they tried to run like a sprint out. Yeah, it's coming up right here, I believe, yep. I was just going to I was just gonna take this whole thing. <laughs> I'm stumbling around, I need a little help, so I appreciate it. These video clips are old DVDs. So it's a little bit different going fast forward and rewind. I mean, you get a safety in a playoff game, you know, that, that's huge, you know, and, and that just speaks that, you know, Cody Kelly was a, was a great player, you know, really set a standard for defensive tackle play. So right after that, you know, we have some momentum, obviously getting a, the, a great shotgun punt, we get to safety, and now they have to, you know, punt from their own 20 or kick off whatever they're going to do. And we're able to get some good field position here with a great return by Jay Preach. Jay's had a really good day this day. I think Jay had about five catches, five or no, six catches. Really good return here, breaking a few tackles, spin move. So definitely a big play there early on. So we're able to capitalize on, th I think, on some of that field position here, Devin, and yeah, what it did is it just flipped the field because, honestly, if I recall, I think we go down there and biff this. But uh, We do. You're right. It keeps the field tilted, and then, obviously, it turns into interception fest, which makes life a lot easier when you're on the offensive side of the ball. Shout out to Eric Wensler coming right here. Eric recognizes the split on the backside of trips. I think they're going to motion, if I remember correctly. Or not, they're just lined up in three wide by one. 
you get a wide split, I recognize as a rattle. Yeah, so that was a big momentum play because we had just turned it over. We get it right back, and, you know, anytime it's first and 10 on the plus 27, you're in pretty good shape. Jay Priest there again. Yeah, just a little play action. We've been running a lot to kind of establish things early. Uh, they had a very good defensive end, and so we're trying to keep him honest. So a little play action to get started, get down into uh, first and goal. Hmm. How about and this then, for a back shoulder clinic, huh? Yeah, I mean, you can't defend this. You know, low and away, set up for the fade. We've shown the fade a lot with Brooke being a big guy. And uh, – you know, you can't put that in a better spot. It's actually pretty well defended, but. Okay, we'll go forward here a little bit. Yeah, I think we, we pride ourselves, too, on just playing physically. We knew they could throw the ball. We knew they had the stats. Um, but I think we just did a really good job with, you know, rerouting receivers and, and just playing tight coverage. Um, you know, we barely played any man in this game. And I think one of their players in the paper post game was kind of saying they just had never seen that much man coverage played before. And, you know, I think that's just a testament to, you know, the physicality. I mean, I think their quarterback was like 14 of, you know, 34 or something like that with, you know, seven interceptions. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good day to be a, a defensive player. This pretty makes it a pretty good day to be an offense player too. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's a short field. Cards. <laughs> Great job just stepping up in the pocket, man. Yeah, you know, a little uh, – turn the loss of seven into first and goal. Well, guys are getting downfield. Guys are hustling. Um good amount of chit chat going on in this game but uh you know huge play here we're up nine nothing but uh honestly their defense hadn't played bad they've just been put in some bad spots we've turned it over once inside the 15 and now we got fourth and goal and uh Kyle Simmons is going to kind of do it from there I, I recall yep. well plus you see the the importance of just poise and, and mental toughness and fortitude because you know, we've already talked about in some of our best games of the decade, you know, we started out down 14 nothing or 16 nothing, and, and came back to win those games. You know, here it's flipped on a team that, that may not have that same type of fortitude. And, you know, I think they got a player kicked out and a coach was throwing gum at officials and it's just kind of a meltdown. So I think it, it's also a good example of just, you know, kind of weathering the storm and, and just how much mental toughness goes into, you know, accumulating wins in the course of a season. Got him rattled a little bit, and this is good opportunity right here for just, just to get at that two-point play and kind of keep the pressure on him. So that's really the end of the first quarter. As we're getting into the uh, second quarter, we'll take a look at some, some things here. <clears throat> I think we were up like 24 nothing at half, and I think at the halftime, you know, kind of one of the messages was, you know, we've been here before and we've battled back, so don't let them battle back, I think was, you know, part of the message. Sure, no doubt. Get the ball on the perimeter here. Yeah, get out the set. Um, you know, a guy that anytime he got in some space, you know, he was going to do some good things and finishes the run hard on top of it for an extra five yards. And, again, just making them, making them run, making them defend the whole field. Like this play right here, Glenn. They're trying to get something going offensively. Yeah, I mean, with only being able to gain 217 total offensive yards, it was it was an uphill battle for them to get something going. And, you know, these guys, they, they enjoyed it. I mean, anytime you get a, a defensive end with an interception 20 yards downfield, you, you, probably something's going in, in your favor at that point. You know, just scheme-wise, execution, credit to the players, really. You know, they just – they just executed well, and 
again, there's a lot of guys on this team that really had a high football IQ and really studied the game, and it, you could see it benefit. Good sack there, I think, by Prokopovich, or Proko. So they get some good field position. Again, I think the score at this point is probably 17 or 16 nothing at this time. Pressure on the quarterback. Mm. Yeah, you know, you know, Zach Click was a good pressure guy. Cody Kelly's in there again. I mean, you know, Jeff Butler's, you know, really came into his own this season. And it just, uh, you know, Marvin Mitchell had a couple picks, I think. So, I mean, it, there's, there's playmakers all over the place for us on defense. Just nice perimeter blocking here, getting those guys out there to, uh, you know, allow Brent to circle the field a little bit and, again, get back into a, a first and goal type situation where, you know, we felt pretty good about being able to pound it out a little bit down here. This is where Kyle could just had a real knack for kind of making great decisions. We ran a similar play previously. Now he fakes that same play and keeps it and gets a nice gain down about the half yard line or maybe – I think he didn't quite get in. I think we get in the next play. Yeah, we do a quarterback sneak, and he about hits his head on the goalpost, I think. Well, he, this is there, kind of in there fighting. They're grabbing his face mask or twisting his leg. And Kyle's a pretty poised guy. So you know when he's getting kind of upset, there's definitely some shenanigans going on down there in the bottom of the pile. Yeah, I think Brent – Brent himself rushed for about 183 yards. And, you know, I think we had about 275 total yards on the day with, with Brent at 183. I think, I think their rushing attack only I was able to manage a, a, a blistering 33 yards. So, um, <laughs> you know, we talked about Justin against the, you know, the Franklin team. Now here's Brent against another playoff team. And, you know, just really being able to put the team on those guys' shoulders is it's just a huge advantage for everyone involved. Really smooth, effortless right there. Get a good play. So now we're – Got a little drive going there. Oh, I skipped the play. So we're going – okay, so now we're trying to kind of get late here in the in the third and second half and, and – uh, Keep the pressure on them at this point. I think we get a nice play right here by Kyle to maybe Evan. Or no, that's Ryan, Ryan Fleming. Yeah, preparation is always good. I mean, we had a good atmosphere. I, if I remember correctly, I think we may have we maybe had a practice in the indoor at some point. Um, you know, Coach Campoli, I think, came out and maybe delivered a message to us as well. So, Really just a good week leading up to the playoff buzz, especially a home playoff game. So, you know, just a, a lot of good, you know, uh, good momentum going into this game from the week of preparation. I was off a play there, Devin. Sorry for that bad uh, bad play on offense. It was, it was that linebacker, too, just to really make it. But here's said again, you know, they're just – they're gambling a little bit at this point, trying to get something going. Just get it out quick, get out on the edge. Again, that pressure on the quarterback forced some just some really some tough situations for them like this one. Yeah, and, and again, you know, respecting their talent and, and just tight coverage as well. Um, you know, I, I believe, like I mentioned, you know, they they were leading the country in a couple of different offensive categories, and if they weren't leading, they were in the top, say, three or four. Um, so they could they could chuck the ball around a little bit. Yeah, this is the fourth quarter now. I think uh, they had, they had uh, scored once. I believe the time this is thirty-one to seven at the time right here. So any chance they have to get back into it, it's kind of tough after this. Yeah, just kind of who's next with the interception? I mean, I think we had oh I don't know maybe five or six DBs with one and a defensive lineman with one. So Marvin had two. So that was a uh, it was definitely our ball that day. 
I believe it still is an NCAA record. The seven interceptions this game still is a record. And definitely something these guys can feel real proud about that they added to that ONU football legacy. Here's the meltdown. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's this is when, uh, yeah. Yeah, they so throw the game. Oh. There's some, from a just, coaching standpoint, if you have the ball on the 26-yard line and the next time you snap it, it's on the five and you didn't run a play, uh, things are going pretty well. I'll just let that one run. That's kind of self-explanatory on that one right there. Okay, so we get to get a chance to kind of punch it in, get up 38-7 right here. And uh, actually, you know what? That's not right. It's 24-7 at this point because uh, we're going to punch it in to get to 31. Then we have one more nice play fun play to kind of relive coming up here after that. So I think we can yes. stop. They threaten a little bit, but we get one more pick, I think. Yeah, once the score gets kind of out of hand like that and a team that's bread and butter is throwing the football, now we kind of know that they have to throw it. You know, and any time that you can kind of dictate the game like that, through a team effort, it, it makes it easier for the defense to kind of know what's coming. Chad Coward coming up there with a nice pick. Here we go. Waiting for this one, Devo. I'm going to see your nice stride back in the day right here, run along. Yeah. This so it's 31 7. Got middle of the fourth quarter right here. Not much time left, but this is a great way to finish it. Yeah, so Brent just punched it in and then, uh, you know, takes it up there, runs over a couple guys. Hmm. Look at the big – look at the hustle down the field. You got Brooke, you got Ryan. We can see Coach Ross on the edge of the screen. Oh, you cut off a little bit. That's too bad. Copy. We need the TV copy for that one. Great crowd that day, you know, just a, just a outstanding, just an unbelievable atmosphere. And I think then we get one more just to kind of get that number seven right here. If they're trying to threaten it all, we get Marvin jump right in front of one more, and then we then we kind of kill the clock right here to run it out. So uh, appreciate again everybody that added to that, that some of those great memories. Appreciate you coaches taking time to go through this stuff. And you know, we like to talk about you know we don't live in the past, but we honor the past. And we learn from the past. I think there's a lot to be learned from some of these great players and some of these great teams and some of these great moments. So appreciate everybody. Go Bears.